Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, members of the Senate and of the House of Representatives, yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Fort Miles began operations on December 4, 1941, three days before the Japanese bombardment of Pearl Harbor. The purpose of the installation was to protect the Delaware River and Bay from the German surface fleet. There were 10 batteries at Fort Miles, and when combined, they stood 28 guns strong. The guns at Fort Miles were classified by the diameter of the barrel. For example, an 8-inch gun would have a shell almost 8 inches wide. Battery Smith had two 16-inch guns that could blast a 1-ton shell 25 miles. The fort had eight railway guns that each weighed 79 tons. Currently open to the public is Battery 519. In 1940, the first of two 16-inch guns were being built for the installation, but instead, two 12-inch guns were brought from Fort Salisbury when the importance of Delaware's forts decreased. The battery was completed in 1943. Artillery was not Fort Miles' only strength. By 1943, there were a total of 455 mines in the Delaware Bay. On the defense at Fort Miles were seven fire control towers located north of present-day Rehoboth Beach. These towers directed the angle of the guns located at the batteries. If an enemy ship appeared, the towers would determine where the ship was located in proximity to the coast. Once final calculations such as wind and vessel speeds were determined, the guns would be ordered to fire. Towers 5 and 6, located north of the Rehoboth Beach coastline, helped control the guns at batteries Hunter, Herring, and Smith and used triangulation to locate enemy vessels. These two towers were set parallel to each other on the beach. A line from each tower was drawn out to the vessel, forming a triangle. This figure helped the batteries and the plotting rooms determine the direction at which the gun should fire. The plotting room stationed throughout the fort would make most of the major calculations. Tower 7 was completed in 1944 and is currently open to the public. On a clear day, you can make out the coastline of Cape May, New Jersey. In New Jersey, there were four fire control towers and three batteries, which protected the Delaware Bay and River. Tower 23, located in Cape May, is also open to the public and controlled battery 223's two 6-inch guns. Also in Fort Miles' arsenal against attackers were several searchlights with 60-inch light bulbs. These devices could turn night into day with the flip of a switch. On May 8, 1945, Germany ordered U-858 to raise the black flag. On May 14th, Captain Lieutenant Thilo Bode surrendered at Fort Miles, making history as the first German warship to surrender to the United States. In its history, there were no more than 2,200 soldiers stationed at Fort Miles. 
These personnel came from the 261st, 198th, and 21st Coastal Artillery Units, as well as the 52nd Railway Coastal Artillery. Fort Miles was commanded by the 2nd Coastal Defense District and the 2nd Service Command, which handled logistics. Currently, Battery 519 is undergoing maintenance and is in the process of being turned into a world-class museum. The Fort Miles Historical Association has been preserving and restoring Fort Miles since 2003. To make future projects possible, please donate or become a member. Visit www.fortmilesha.org for more information.